So, you might be wondering why we're dressed the way we are. <laughs> why is that? Do you he, wonder that sometimes? This was know. a closing optional yes, show. Yes. By the way, we want to thank you for getting dressed up for the show. <laughs> You're this welcome. This is my friend, Anthony Pignataro. Anthony and I uh, worked at OC Weekly for a number of years. He went on to become the editor of Maui Time, and now he's back in California doing that lovely thing called freelance journalism, which oh, it's I, glorious. I definitely recommend it yeah. to you because it's just one big gravy train. It's one big yeah. ego boost. Oh, oh absolutely. So yeah. You feel so good about yourself. By the way, welcome okay. to the drill. Oh, yes. You have to keep doing that. <laughs> I have to once in a while. I keep forgetting the name of the show. This is Steve Lowry. Hello. I'm Tom Hofar. That guy. This is our intern, Elizabeth. Where's Nicole? In Canada. Mm -hmm. She's in a place in Canada that she's not sure where it is. So uh, if Nicole's in Canada, where are you staying, Elizabeth? At her house. With who? The dogs. Ah, uh, well. Epic party tomorrow? I mean, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to say that on the air. Right. Can either confirm or deny. And then yeah. producer, director, extraordinary opinionist. Yes. John. Oh, opinionist now. I got yes. a title? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he's a big opinionist. Oh. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Um, no, he's the eye roll. He's the <laughs> eye roll we all need from our younger generation. Like, Dad, you're saying something stupid. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he saved your ass a couple times, by yeah. the way. We don't, we don't have to go into the With Stephen A. With some fine S editing. Yeah, the Stephen A. Smith impression. We don't have to no. get into that. He uh, is our friend. However. <laughs> hey, we, we have Anthony on because. We have a Hawaii uh, theme show. Today. Yes, a Hawaii theme show, which, by the way. We th <laughs> we thought it was not going to be themed also with Hawaiian shirts because when when Tom said to me, "Oh, Anthony's going to be on the show. Should we wear Hawaiian shirts?" I said, "Hmm, let me text Anthony because there's something about that that doesn't feel right." And I said, "Hey, Anthony, would it be appropriate for us to wear Hawaiian shirts with you on?" And Anthony diplomatically responded, "Ugh, Ugh. <laughs> Ugh is what he said." So of course I I showed up like this. He showed up like this. Sure. Tommy showed up like this saying, look, it's not Hawaiian, but Anthony? Oh, yeah. See, this is what we call a tier two Hawaiian shirt, or actually technically an aloha shirt. Nobody ah. calls them Hawaiian shirts in Hawaii. It's, okay. It's right, yeah, an aloha it shirt. There's, okay. there's two types. There's the first type, which is what the loud ones with the, the little beer mugs and, and liquor yeah. bottles on. Yeah, and there's five o'clock somewhere. You're, yeah. You're the, buffets. Yes. <laughs> the tourists wear those. Okay. Oh, sure. All right. Then there's the... This, which is very nice, it's got a very nice pattern. I'm seeing here, the the for more those, muted. For, the, for those listening on radio, yes, it's it's kind of a, a turquoise, a, kind of a soft turquoise, and then yeah, it has we got a some suggestion palm of, fronds. I'm yeah. seeing, but it's Tommy Bahama, so it's very exactly it's subtly oh. cool. I this think. is this is the type of aloha shirt preferred to by the preferred by the bankers, the land developers, and the realtors. So, so basically, the robber barons. Yes, but it's yes. still yes. it's still a mainland kind of shirt. I was in Costco once, and a guy who lived there was admiring shirts just like this and I walked by and I just said uh, banker shirts and he and he put it back and he was like oh my god you're right and he left and he didn't buy the shirt and I was like oh my yeah. god again this is from the Goodwill collection yeah oh. so it was I probably why because the, he wore it to Hawaii and was shamed brought it home and traded it in I don't know if you were watching this episode uh, uh, we had a little meeting one time and people kind of gently suggested that he should Mixing a little color with his uh, oh. stuff. Oh, he, sure. Literally an hour later, I start getting like uh, um, you can edit text this, with you can pictures. You edit this part out later. <laughs> <of> him <laughs> in a dressing room with this shirt and other shirts. It was it was like a scene from so Pretty Woman, you know. Oh. It was like sweet. Yeah. This Lovely. Is, this is yeah. of no interest to listeners, viewers, or myself. <laughs> Correct, Amundo. Let's, so let's we talk about. Uh, well, first of all, let, explain just a little bit about your uh, career in Hawaii. Why you went there? Oh, uh, I went there because they gave me a job to run my own paper. Okay. So that was awesome. Yeah. I loved it, yeah. and I could still have it now if it wasn't for the fact that everybody else has terrible jobs in Hawaii. It's uh, just awful there across really? the board. So we came back here, uh, my girlfriend and I, because yeah. it's much easier for her to find work here than it is out there. Yeah. So. And as far as sports goes, now you were telling me University of Hawaii is, you know, the biggest oh, thing. By, uh, I was on Maui, so no. it's kind of far removed from that. But, yeah, right. UH is by far the biggest but as sports far as name. pro sports teams, who do they follow? Oh, man. that's See, that's dictated so much by the feed that we get on cable. Uh, I mean, it's like we get the Southern California feed, so it would be Angels, Dodgers, yeah. that kind of thing. So, so, well, so, yeah, when those teams map out their – their their uh, property, you know, yeah. where their TV feed goes. Hawaii is the is always included in LA sports, and it goes as far as Las Vegas too. So wow, 
they uh, they really stake out their claim. So it, it makes the LA market that much more yeah. massive. Yeah. Right, but right. we'd I'd also I knew guys who were Raiders fans, who were mm. Niners fans. They they followed the Chargers or whatever. So it's yeah, because Hawaii is such a, a amalgamation of people from all over the place. There for all kinds of different reasons, whether like you said, windsurfers or businessmen or whatever. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Land so barons. They're going to follow barons. different teams for different reasons. But I've heard that the Lakers. The Lakers are very popular. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That they kind of. You is were telling it? me the Lakers and the Giants. Uh, Lakers, Giants, yeah. Forty yeah. Niners. Yeah. Niners, 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 Niners as well. But yeah. I think the Lakers, with Jerry Buss, kind of staked that claim too back in the day when they went to hold their training camp in Hawaii. That's right. And that was always the the most famous moment in one of those Hawaii camps was Shaq. Uh, after after I think he was in a contract dispute with Buss, then slamming the ball, slam dunk, and pointed at at Buss and said, "Pay me," you know. <laughs> It was a really big moment in Laker <laughs> history there. It's kind of like I do with Jeff Proctor here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he says, have another Coke. Yeah. But I was going to say, how's that working out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the time difference always struck me as someone. I've been to Hawaii twice. One time I went in 1990 for a job interview at the Honolulu Advertiser. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I got there, I realized I had young kids, and I said, the price of diapers here are just ridiculous. Mm. I can't the afford The price of everything yeah, is it, ridiculous. Diapers in particular, I thought this was stupid. Yeah. I couldn't afford to live there, so I went back to Southern California, which was awful, ridiculously priced as well. Sure. But, but I realized the time difference is what really threw me off in that you're in a six-hour kind of difference, time difference from the East Coast, right. not just three, and I add another three. So if you want to watch the NFL, it's a 7 a.m. and a it's 10 a.m. It's definitely a morning thing, yes. Yeah. Early right. morning, and for something like soccer games, that's, yeah. you know, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Middle of the night, oh yeah. I didn't yeah. even think of that. Oh, that's okay. right. So you're getting, like, if you want to watch a Laker game, that's coming on about 4. Yeah. Oh, but wow. the complete opposite works during college football season when you think our 7 p.m. kickoffs are done. At 10, 8, 10 p.m., you just you get the Hawaii feed. You watch the Hawaii game. Mm -hmm. That's right. I remember there was a certain time, I think when June Jones was there, that yeah. the University of Hawaii actually became very popular. Yes. Because if you still wanted to watch more football, you could always watch that. Oh, the midnight kickoffs on, yeah. on right? the East Coast with Hawaii yeah. and uh, what was the quarterback he had that uh, – Cole Brennan, right? That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Through like uh, 56 touchdowns or something? Yeah. yeah, I mean, that goes back to uh, the USC offensive coordinator who was there. Uh, oh, that's right. Um, oh. Why are we blanking on his name? Chow. Lord, uh, Norm, Norm Chow. Chow. Norm, Norm Chow. Chow. Yeah. He did not have a good run. No, he did not have a good run <laughs> at, at the, uh, the U. Norm Chow sounds like something you get for your pet. Hey, you, careful! You have <laughs> you can edit that out. <laughs> you have a you had an interesting stat of where, where we shoot is is Carson, Carson, California. Yes. And when I told you that, you said there are more Hawaiians living in the Southern California area, uh, uh, especially area, right? Carson, yeah. than there are in the state of Hawaii. Native hey. Hawaiians. Native exactly. Hawaiians. People yeah. who who identify as Native Hawaiian, okay. because there's there's a lot of different ways to measure that, and it's none of it's really scientific. Mm. I knew there was a big Sino, uh Samoan, Samoan yeah. uh, community yes. right around here. I oh mean, yeah, Carson uh, High would just have our, all the Samoans. Yeah. One of our uh, workers uh, who works with Pro Angle a lot is uh, Samoan. He's the he was a vegetarian for a long time, so he stood out. Well, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> oh no. Hey, speaking of workers, where the hell's Eric? I thought he was gonna be here. <laughs> we had this he's, guy on the sorry, show. Elizabeth. He's, he's MIA. Don't worry about it. Okay. Sorry, Elizabeth right. is not a. No, good no, no. Effort. We love Elizabeth. No, oh, she's oh, don't. She's, what, she's she's our soccer monitor oh, right now. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, we're watching Brazil and Belgium. No, I, I knew about the Samoans because when my kid would play flag football, he would play against other elementary schools. Yeah. And some of the Carson elementary schools would have not just a great Samoan uh, boys playing, but girls. Oh, yeah. The girls formed the offensive line. Sure. Yeah. It was insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure, there's a, there's a lot of Polynesian yeah. influences in this part. There has been for many, many years. Mm. Yeah. We were talking about the Lakers. So where were you when you found out they signed LeBron? Oh, I don't know. I was here, probably goofing off something, <laughs> not writing, which is what I should have been doing. Yes, way yeah. to go. The best, uh, the best thing of being a freelancer. Sure. Not writing. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then they did not sign Boogie Cousins. Which I'm fine with. You're okay with? Yeah. Johnny, what do you think about that? They could have had him for five million bucks. It's probably better for the Lakers. You think so? That he didn't sign yeah. with them. Um. He has that reputation of being a locker room destroyer yeah. Yeah. and all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with him signing with the Warriors. That's totally cool with me. But I'll tell you what. The Warriors are in the position. I remember the, the Lakers used to be in the 80s and then later with the Shaq Kobe thing. Is You can hire, uh, you can sign these kind of malingerers. But if you're already a championship team, 
they know where they fit in. Whereas, oh, cool. Belgium again. Woo. That was a great goal. That was a great goal. Oh, that's my boy, De Bruyne. I like saying it. It sounds like I'm a New Yorker, De Bruyne. Um, sure, go any, with that. What are we going with? Anyways, when, you, when you're – Somebody else finally <laughs> doing it besides me. When, you, when you're a championship team, you can bring in Bob McAdoo like the Lakers did. Spencer just, Haywood. Spencer right. was not – yeah, that, that didn't work out fit. so good. He yeah. put a hit out on Paul Westhead. That actually <laughs> happened. I know this. Good times. Yeah. Uh, well, and then you try to build your super team with Carl Malone and Gary Payton. And then, oh, Gary know. Payton. Yeah. I was going to say that that's where when you're outside of L.A., like me from yeah. Ohio, yeah. and you look at the Lakers doing that where these guys are like the Warriors doing now yeah. where somebody comes and signs for mid-level exemption. Right. For five million dollars, and a ring an All Star, yeah. and it just looks like, oh, well, they're just trying to buy a team. Yeah. And That's right. Just, and that, I, yeah. that, I'm glad they failed because that would have set a, a horrible template, which is still trying to be replicated now. And yeah. you could buy a team; they they couldn't. Didn't the, didn't the Lakers draft Rodman? No, no, but he played. he played. He played Mark. for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Before he became our special envoy to North Korea. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Exactly. God love he was him. another yeah. Phil Jackson project. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How scary was it when that was going to happen? And Rodman seemed like the sure. sane one. Like he, he was suddenly yeah. the, the voice, voice of, of reason. reason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we live in dark times, my friend. <laughs> His interview on CNN that day, uh, the day of the <laughs> when he was crying, when he was crying, yes, was one of the most entertaining five eight minutes you'll ever see on cnn and wasn't he wearing like a bitcoin t-shirt or a bitcoin <laughs> yeah. Sh- yeah. Yeah, hat he was promoting like a, some yeah, sort yeah. of thing uh, it might have been rodman coin uh, i'm not sure if he's got his own <laughs> blockchain now uh i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> but yeah that's what it was <laughs> cryptocurrency and dennis rodman this is this is america you were talking about people who identify as hawaiian i i one of my favorite shows is united shades of america with uh, kamal bell who does this oh, for yeah. cnn's on yeah. sunday night He's been doing this a couple of years. This finally, I think it's the 24th episode, he finally went to Hawaii to sort of get his take on Native Hawaiians. And this was okay. on, luckily it was on the other night. Um, his conclusion, his takeaway was how he finds that the U.S. really screwed the Hawaiians, the Native sure. Hawaiians, oh, by just absolutely. taking their property, turning it into a you know a military and it, base. Well, and it goes on to this day. Yeah, yes. and, and, and I did this not never really. stopped. Right, I did not realize this, that there's... I guess Bill Clinton signed something into effect where he apologized for everything. For and the overthrow and all of that. But yeah. we'll be keeping all yeah. the stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah that was that it, was also part of the deal. But that, it's, uh, Pearl Harbor is still ours. Yeah. It set up some sort of, uh, I, I don't remember which island, uh, a sovereignty, uh, sort of a nation of Hawaii where there about 80 people live. And they oh. sort of have formed their own. Kahoalave, after the Navy was done bombing the hell yeah, out of it, was it that, and yeah. destroying the water table, right. they said, oh, the Hawaiians can have it back. Right. You right. Know? And it's like, you can't live there. We had, Yeah, you had to pull all the old shells off of the island and yes. stuff. And yeah. there's about Which 80 people living still there. going on. It's, it's recognized by the United Nations as a sovereign state. And there's about, you know, they, they've learned how to form their own community there. And it's, 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 uh, you, you, you hope at some point they could get a, an Olympic team together and just kill like the United Puerto States. Rico. <laughs> right, yeah, like Puerto right. Rico, yeah. But, but I didn't want to, I, I was just interested in if it, just about the history of Hawaii and, and how these things happen that a lot of people don't understand. Um, being there for so long, were you sort of accepted as a you know non-Hawaiian? Oh man, that is, that, that's a question I could talk about for an hour. Um, was I accepted? Yeah, I was, th- th- I mean, I'm white in right. Hawaii. I mean, that, you can be a dumb howly or you can do a, be a dumb effing howly and uh, i think yeah. i was by the time i was done i was the dumb howly uh, and that was yeah. wow b- pretty much the best you can hope for wow um in that i understood my place i understood my privileges and i understood um what people before me had done and were doing around me yeah and i did my best as editor of the paper to call out what i saw but for many many people i was always going to be a white guy and, and how that do you was do never going to change? And how do you do your job with that kind of? Uh, you, know, you just put your head down and you do it. You do you hire a staff of certain people that can do get get information. From it's funny people? that you say hire a staff because <laughs> we were. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you, Three you're talking like it was the advertiser. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was me in a room with a couple interns, and you know, okay. we pretty much this cobbled together <laughs> what we could. I mean, we had a. We had a Native Hawaiian woman who works in our office in an admin capacity, and I relied on her for stories. I relied right. on her all kinds of things because her perspective was so valuable. Yeah, um, we were talking about we're talking about ex- exploitation here, and we were going to wait, but this is a good point to bring it up. A few weeks, months ago, the state of California declared our state sport 
to be surfing. Of course. Well, it's course a bill. It, it had to start as a bill, yeah. the Assembly. Right. It just got approved by the Assembly, got approved by the Senate this week. Right. Now it's waiting for Jerry Brown to sign it. Yeah, which means, like, we could declare lacrosse or something. Right. It's clearly not our sport. It's the Hawaiians. I'm curious. Well, did yeah, you guys it, get wind of that at all? Or No, I hadn't heard about it until uh, you mentioned it. Yeah. And, and I assume that when it finally does make landfall in Hawaii, it, people are not going to be They're pleased. Because, I mean, Hawaii, Hawaiians have a rich history of surfing. Right. Captain Cook's but sailors I, saw them right. saw Hawaiians yeah. surfing when they pulled up. Right before up. they beat them to right death. Right before they put his head on a <laughs> stick, yes. Uh, they were surfing. Yes, so. exactly. But I think the people who are, are behind this bill understand they've never – taken away the fact that they believe surfing is an indigenous sport for Hawaii. Yeah. It was brought to the mainland in the late 1880s. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that it's become such a business here yeah. is what I think they're interested in. Oh, absolutely. But, but to me, it's I have this problem with surfing being categorized as a sport to start with. Um, it's more of a culture and a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. At, at best, I'd call it an activity. Yeah, it's an outdoor <laughs> yes. activity. Yes. Right? Uh, yeah, they, mm. Johnny's Johnny's struggling <laughs> with this. They have now. It's going to be an Olympic demonstration sport, I right. believe, soon. And when the Olympics come to Los Angeles, I believe it will be a full-fledged Olympic medal right. sport. Which, mm-hmm. um, in talking to people, I'm 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 a big surf cultural buff, and I love to uh, read about the history. I'm growing up in Hawthorne with the Beach Boys was not mm. the history of surfing that sure. you wanted to grow on with right. because none of them surfed except Dennis Wilson, the drummer. Right. But the funny part is that a lot of the people figure. Um, and how much business surfing brings to the whole state oh, up yeah. and down the coast from, you know, Half Moon Bay down to, to San Diego and Trestles and in between. Yeah. And don't Santa Cruz and Huntington Beach argue about which yeah. one's yes. actually surf, surf city? city. Right, and right. of course the answer is Honolulu, but nobody, <laughs> right. nobody ever... <laughs> right. Yeah. right, exactly. I yeah. know of a surf city in North Carolina, so... Is uh, that right? Yeah, it's oh, on uh, Topsail Island, North Carolina. The oh, main city man. is called Surf City, North Carolina. But the one point that one of the, the as- waves suck, by assembly, the way. <laughs> one of the California Assembly people who was voting on this voted against it, was because they felt skateboarding was more of the California. I sport. totally uh, agree. Again, I, it's another yeah. culture. I think I don't know if it's a, it's a sport, but again, X Games and so things I'm have just made curious, it into a sport. Why don't you think surfing is a sport? Well, how do you judge somebody by doing something? It's it's like judging an art show. But oh, so you're saying to be so a sport, figure you have skating to be... is not a sport either. I really d- I have a hard time with anything that's judged by humans as All you aerials. Th- there's there's too skiing. much too much subjectiveness in terms yeah. of judging rather yeah. than the ball went in the hole. Right. We yeah, win. But it's a score. But there's a scoreboard that's based on a result. For something to be a sport, does it have to be competitive? No, I mean, there's. I'm a... sure a lot of bath is athleticism. Athleticism. God, I didn't know what the heck you were saying there for a second. <laughs> you that know what? I've st- by the way, I've started on uh, cold brew coffee now. I'm not doing it in the hot. You're not coffee. doing the high octane. No, I went oh. with cold coffee now. Okay, is that the the, the stuff that's at the truck stop? Yeah, at the oh, truck okay. stop. <laughs> yeah, because we're a hillbilly show. <laughs> right. Lord, you guys um, don't know hillbilly. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> athleticism. However, I don't think all of it has to be judged as a winner you're a winner you're not okay a wait hold on do you think golf is a sport yeah okay that's the craziest thing i've ever heard why surfing you have to be such a great athlete to be a surfer you have to be a good golf. athlete to be a golfer yeah but in golf the ball no, goes in the hole wait, wait, the wait, guy wait, wins you do have to be a good athlete what, what do you categorize as an athlete i've tried to play golf and i'm no good at it well that's just because you suck <laughs> but that has nothing to do what are you talking about you took an you took a surfer and put it next to a like just a, a run-of-the-mill surfer next to a run-of-the-mill golfer the run-of-the-mill surfer is going to be the better athlete i'm not disputing that i'm just saying <laughs> as a sport that has to be judged yeah i don't i think there's a lot of people in the surf community that are against that part of it oh no that is absolutely true. so i would say yeah. making it an official sport of any state oh i dig that yeah. except in hawaii it was very popular because it's seen uh, like uh, surfing becoming an olympic sport was very popular because it's seen as Telling the world, look, look at what Hawaii gave right. you. Yeah. This is something that the whole world is now celebrating. Well, and that speaks to, we, we have a friend of ours named Dave Davis who wrote a terrific biography of... Duke Kahnemoku. Uh, right. Yeah. And and the book is called uh, Waterman. Check Waterman. it out. It's terrific. I think we're going to try and get Dave on the right. show to talk about it. But that's one thing. Whenever you see like documentaries about Native Hawaiians, the, the ocean is not just a place to play. It's no. not a place for sports. No. It is so integral to how they define themselves and what they are. It's... It's their way of life. Yeah. It's where they get their food. It's where their ancestors dwell. And, uh, Amakua, the sharks. Yeah. Um, it's it's everything to them. There's yeah. nothing more beautiful than a funeral memorial for a surfer. The yeah. paddle out, yes. The paddle yeah. out and the circle, and it's just and they throw the lay in there. And yeah, yeah. It's it's a cultural thing that I wish was not so much sportified. Yeah. But, but okay, we'll but, have that. But you're absolutely right. There is that whole. Um, 
and it, there are a lot of these guys in California too. They they they're called soul surfers. Yeah. And their yeah. whole point is no, surfing is is quasi spiritual. Right. And the idea of of making it as like uh, putting a number on it. To say is, nothing of commercializing. Yeah, it. exactly. Oh, yeah. Is, is kind of uh, yeah to give it a number. Yeah. Now then you have the Kelly Slater uh, spin on this, where recently he's built this water ranch up in Northern California, yeah. where he's got this great wave pool, and he can create a competition no matter what kind of day it is because he sure. can create the perfect wave every time. And it was a really cool thing to watch. CBS televised it a few weeks ago. It mm. was I think Real Sports did a story on it about a year and a half yeah. ago, maybe two years ago. And it was, yeah, it's it's a way of being able to create consistent right. Right. waves that are so you don't have to rely on, all right, well, this was a bad day, and it can actually kind of make judging much more cohesive. Yeah, it does make judging co- And that's why Huntington Beach became basically Surf City, whatever, is that they have a consistent wave. It doesn't mean yeah. it's a great wave, no. but you know exactly what that wave is right. in Huntington Beach. And the fact that, you know, they're going to ride every July 4th. Those are two things <laughs> right. you can depend on. And the wedge is a very popular place. Not so much to break just, your neck. To, yeah, exactly. Oh, to man. Break your that, neck. That's a wedge. washing machine. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I hope there's a lot of surfers watching this. Because we talked a lot of surfing. But that was great. How often do you surf? I I have two boards. One's a big 10-footer my wife got me at Costco. Yeah. I took it out. It was. It felt like I was wrestling an alligator in the water. It just. Yeah. I had no control over this. I have no uh, ability to pop up right. and try to wait. So, uh, you know, I do it sporadically yeah. when I feel really stupid and right. want to feel like this is a dumb idea. Right. Um, and I, and I realize, too, I don't have the core muscles to do it. The, the best surfers in the world, I think, are, if they could pick a sport to compete in, would be wrestling. Mm-hmm. Low center of gravity, great core muscles, great ability to so great stay athletes. in balance. Great yeah, athletes. They are, no, right they are great athletes. athletes. Right. Mm, most of the great, you, most of Dewey Weber and all the guys at right. Miracosta and Hermosa Beach grew up as wrestlers in there. So you would allow that the, the surfers are at least in the category of your... I've never said surfers are of, not great of athletes. your golfing studs, <laughs> as we all are familiar with. <laughs> How's John Daly doing these days? Uh, uh, Living in a trailer park. (laughs) Just to get on the whole, it's a state, you know, it's the official state or whatever. Uh, To give you an idea of how stupid these entire things are. Right. Do you know what the official state bird of Utah is? Mm. I'm going to say. I used to know that. Big bird? (laughs) No? no, it is the California seagull. <laughs> Absolutely ah. awesome. And is is the seal like him with like a? Bag There's just of two f- things wrong with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it the seagull with a bag of French fries hanging out of his beak, like the Great well, Salt if, Lake? Right. Yeah. If it's a seagull, it has to have French fries. Right. Yeah, and and, and a kid it. crying in the background, like ah, oh, the seagull took my French fries. Yeah. I. You know what the state song of Oklahoma is? If it's not Oklahoma, it's, I'm gonna be really disappointed. It's not. Is it Born to Run? It's do you realize? It's do <laughs> I know do I get that? It's do you realize by the Flaming Lips? Oh, that's a God. great song. No, no do you realize? That's a great song. Do you realize? No, when New Jersey tried to make "Born to Run" the state song. Well, it, someone made a, a cogent point about that. It's a great song, but they said it's tough to to argue for a state song that contains the word suicide. A couple it. of times. Yeah, so that's not such a good yeah. thing. Yeah. To so do even if they're talking about New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, real quick, uh, the Dodgers are in first place. Oh, wait. They are. One other thing I want to talk about the Lakers before we let them go. Watch out for the hand gesture. Today, <laughs> the news came that the Oklahoma City Thunder, speaking of Oklahoma, are going to let Carmelo Anthony go, which means pretty much anyone can have him for about $5 million bucks. Pass. Which is the same for me, by the way. But anyone can have him for $5 million bucks. It seems the two teams that would ha- be most interested would be Houston Rockets. Okay. L.A. Lakers. And I've been on a deserted island for the last 15 <laughs> years, so the fact that Carmelo Anthony's still playing is By amazing. By the way, is Gilligan's me. Island still yeah. played a lot there? Oh, don't even. As a me, tourist don't deterrent? Don't even get me. No. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> However, they did have the Harlem Globetrotters come to play a That's game right. there, and right. they still didn't get with, off the island. With Chick Hearn. With Chick. Right. Yeah. Chick Hearn was in there. Against that. robots, right? <laughs> yes, because this was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> ever. Uh, Ever I'll robots. tell you, when you're 10 years old and that's on TV, there's everything everything else yeah. just pales by comparison. Yeah. Okay, some uh, I, I know it's natural to go from Carmelo Anthony to <laughs> battling robots, but let's go back to Carmelo. Johnny, are you interested in all at Carmelo Anthony? Um, only as a set piece to come off the bench, maybe for with LeBron. Um, that's a great but point. Yeah. That other than that, uh, yeah. Carmelo demands the ball too much, yeah, and I he is a ball smell stopper. Trouble. Yeah. I smell trouble. He'd yeah. be better off going back to Syracuse for three years of eligibility. 
Wow. Yeah. You know what? I'll take him on the Cavs, though, if you want to go play <laughs> in what the hell? England. That'd be great, Carmelo. That'd be great. By uh, the way. Th- there's some banner space that needs to be <laughs> taken up. Ain't going to be Johnny, Carmelo. There, there Carmelo has a- based his whole career on gold medals. Remember that? He's got four. Yeah. Yeah. No one's ever going to get that. Him and think. Bonnie Blair. Yeah, way to go. There you go. That's wow. his calling card. International part. championship. Well, That's yeah. right. Uh, although Jerry McNamara, I think, had much more to do with that than Melo. <laughs> hey, by the way, this story came out that Dame Lill- Lillard might want to come here. And another guy Lillard. that might be a, it might wow. be available, Kevin Love. What do you think? Mm, going back <laughs> to a Beach Boy <laughs> reference. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, uh, is that please get rid of him or no? No, stay? You no like, you like it's like I just don't want to go to completely irrelevant again. Yeah. Like last time this happened and, uh, you know, go from – I know we didn't have 60 wins last year, but go from a lot of wins to having very few wins, like yeah. 19 or so. That Speaking would just of really Cleveland, I thought of Cleveland the other day when I was thinking, what was the last NHL team to just completely fold? Was it, what not, do you mean? The, was it not the Cleveland Barons? Cleveland oh. Barons were absorbed okay. into the uh, Minnesota North Stars. That's right. Wow. That sounds like yeah. something out of Futurama. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, just, they just went away? Absorbed, yes. yeah. Wow. Yeah, basically the North Stars took over their front office yeah. and fired most of the staff. Was and that a Steinbrenner? Kept the good players. I don't know if Steinbrenner right. owned them. Yeah. They were the California Seals before they beca- were the... Oh, again, wow. yeah. They met, became the Barons, and then they... So if you have Baron gear, it's it's actually pretty cool. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah. Was it uh, was it the same colors as the Cavs? Uh, no, it that's was a... more of like gray and maroon, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's sweet. That's very I'm nice. going out looking for my Barons. Good man. Okay, so, but anyways, real quick, the Dodgers yesterday moved into first place. They didn't, by, how they many, didn't by how many games? Point zero 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 two percent They very actually good. have but less wins. We're yeah. looking at the standings right, right. now. Oh, no they have kidding. less wins based than on the percentage. Diamondbacks. It's okay. based on percentage because there's a lot of rainouts and guys making up games. I don't know stuff. if you were paying attention, but they started the season so horribly. To you earlier or <laughs> to this in general? <laughs> We started in he, general. They started out so bad. Us and pretty much every like show and writer said that's it. This is you know the runs over, and they're they're right back in it now. And they played better without Kershaw for that yeah. stretch. And Kershaw's back now, and he's what, Kershaw and uh, Rich Hill have a combined what four wins already. See, that's amazing <laughs> that's how ridiculous. they're they win. But Max Muncie is suddenly uh, Mel Ott. I love yeah. saying Mel Ott. What does he have, 20 homers and 38 RBIs? That's really good numbers. See, that's the uh, – <laughs> we, we've been talking about the fact that now teams just hit all these solo home runs. Okay. You know what I mean? And the Dodgers hit like 55 home runs in a in a month, but they only Why? hit like Why 7, 8 that? RBIs. Well, everyone talks about this launch angle that everyone is – It's the new saber runs. metrics. Yeah. Uh, the new okay. three-point point, three point shot. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it it goes with the pitching with uh, spin rate is like the new uh, kind of what you're kind of looking at for trying to. So we're not maximum. interested in we're not interested in walks anymore. That's now walks, walks are still yeah, part walks of it. Oh, okay, good. But okay. Yes. This is a way of uh, it's kind of the ultimate beating the shift. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just hit it over it. It's and yeah, a lot more a lot more hitters are trying to increase their launch angle, and so it's making more batters. But there's swing no. It's not so much cut. A, yeah, base to base. You know, kind no, of yeah. strategy. It's it's the if you if you compare it to chess, it's not making moves. It's just like clearing the whole freaking board and letting your king just kick people in the rear end. Sure, just for runs, for runs' sake. So yeah, they had a game where they won eight to seven in extra innings and seven solo home runs. Oh so, my god! Um, <laughs> yeah. wow. So Anthony, just to um, I just want to <laughs> clarify to Tom. Golf is a uh, like where the best athletes go. Sure, hide up at the best. <laughs> Surfers are <laughs> wimps, yes. and chess is a contact sport. So just where <laughs> chess is a contact. Yes, sport. a contact sport. Yeah, you kick ass be. in that. Uh, I didn't ever consider if I didn't see it on ESPN uh, this past home day, runs are I saw competitive eating and cornhole. Yes, on ESPN. So oh those boy. must be sports. Oh boy, those My must be sports. My buddy is actually the play-by-play guy for the cornhole. Uh, Why league. does that not surprise you? Uh, I, yeah. I went to college with. With them, he, <laughs> yeah, Ryan Alessio. He was the play-by-play guy, and he's I, been the week before hilarious. that. I watched uh, with my girlfriend. We sat there and watched an hour of cornhole, and we kept doing this. I can't believe we're watching cornhole <laughs> for an oh. hour. Huh? No, and it's like we're back it's, into it's it. the curling of the summer sports, yeah. right? Oh okay. man, it's yeah. it's amazing though. And they'll just choom, choom, yeah, yeah, they're choom. they're pretty accurate. Oh, they're unbelievable. If if one of their bean bags doesn't land. The place goes crazy. <laughs> it just yeah. If they if they don't make it on the board, it's more of an upset yeah. than anything else. Yeah. It's it's hilarious. But yeah, my buddy Ryan, he hosts a show in Youngstown, a radio show, and then somehow he got into the 
cornhole championship calling. Yeah, and I think yeah. Yeah. cornhole sort of replaced is, is Team cornhole, Pelowai's bowling, I think. And is cornhole more of a sport than surfing, would you say? Because it is competitive. No. You, can, you don't have to judge it. I don't believe corn. I think cornhole is an activity. Is it more of a sport than bowling is? Um, no, I think they're on the same. Curling, bowling, cornhole, I think, are on the same level. What, yeah, about, yeah. what about darts? Darts, same thing. If you can drink a beer while you're playing this, which you can in all of these. So softball. Yes. Oh, softball. That's an activity. Really? Not a sport? Oh, oh that's a sport. For uh, men. I got it. Nah, nah, well, for softball's men. a sport. Well, how about baseball? You can drink a beer while you're playing baseball. And by the way, they were doing other things back in the clubhouse. Club Manny Darryl Ramirez, for, I mean, he was drinking beers and eating chickens in <laughs> Boston, right? Who that's was right. the player who used to not want to slide because he had a sandwich in his back pocket? <laughs> Do you remember that? I think it was High Pockets McGee. Back I mean, it was in the like a hundred years ago. Me in Little League. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good. Uh, um, we we want to get to something, and and we told Anthony there is n- absolutely no way to um, transition to this. But so you're riffing off my sandwich joke? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, we're riffing off the sandwich joke. It wasn't a joke. Uh, <sighs> a few weeks ago, Tom and I uh, <laughs> talked about um, <laughs> mental health issues. This is the uh, worst transition ever. Yes. Okay. Uh, Let's start again. Let's start yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, so oh. that was great talking about all that other fun yeah. stuff. Right, What's right. a sport? But you know what's not a sport? Making fun of people with mental illness. That's oh, right. Man. That's right. And Anthony uh, wrote a piece. It appeared last week. <laughs> yeah, last week. Yeah. And um, I, I, I'll sum it up real quick, but I'd like you to talk in depth about it. Uh, we'll Anthony put this up friend, on the website as yeah, well. Yeah. Anthony had a friend in high school, his best friend, uh, who died when he was 15, 16? 15, yeah. Uh, from an accident. And uh, a few weeks ago... He was alerted by a family member to uh, check out some information. It turned out his friend had not died by an accident, but had actually committed suicide. And um, part of that is what Tom and I talked about in an earlier episode, that one of the real tragedies of of mental health issues and and suicide is that people are very ashamed of having these thoughts about feeling this way. And that's really what Anthony's piece was about. Well, his piece was also about, too, about what you do, how you sort of go through the process of losing a friend and trying right. to rationalize, could I have done something different? So l- let's start there. W- sure. W- with your friend, w- did you ever think that, I mean, I, obviously you were a young man yourself, but w- did you ever think like, oh, this is a possibility? No. Yeah. And what's what's even more amazing is that I've reached out to a lot of people. I've reached out to a number of people before I wrote the story. Right. And then I've had a number of people reach out to me after I wrote the story, people yeah. who grew up with me and, and with my friend. And not one person, um, including former teachers, had any inkling right. that this was a problem. Right. None. The word suicide, taking his own life, was not something that entered any of our minds in right. all of the last three decades. Right. Um, can you can you just run through briefly how this came about again? You, you had thought your friend had gone a certain way. And, and well, what, well, basically what happened was is that we he, he disappeared one night. Mm-hmm. He went out jogging. He went out jogging on a... Tuesday nights, I think it was, or whatever, on a regular basis. And then one night, he didn't come home. And we were told that he was missing. And then the next day, the police found his body in a riverbed. Mm-hmm. So the, the uh, what we were told, what everyone was told, yeah, was that he had fallen while jogging off mm-hmm. of a bridge. Right. And that's horrible. Right. But there was a, something that was oddly comforting about it, because nothing any of us could have done to right. stop it. It was an accident. It was just one of those random things that happens. Yeah. And, oh, maybe a month ago? Yeah. Um, I actually, for the first time, looked at his death certificate. And it was beyond clear. I don't want to get too much into the details right. about what's there. Uh, but it's clear that he, he took his own life. Yeah. There's no question he did. Mm. Um, when you did the piece and you talked to people about it, were they, number one, equally shocked as you were? And were they comfortable talking about this? Or was there that feeling like, ooh, maybe we shouldn't talk about this? Uh, both. Yeah. Both. Um, I talked to a family member of his before. I reached out to him before I wrote the story. Mm-hmm. Just because I've known him yeah. and so forth. A brother of his. Yeah. Um, and he didn't get back to me for a long time. So I didn't press it. I didn't push it. I didn't want to go down the road of saying, hey, I'm going to hound you about your brother right. from three decades ago. Right. Um, which is why I kept all the identities out of my story. Right. Everything. I didn't even name the school that we went to. Right. I didn't want to name anybody. Right. Because um, I just wanted to write it, what I was going through, mm-hmm. and what I, at that point, I was kind of naive because I thought that basically that, hey, maybe I'm the only one that didn't know. Yeah. And I was kind of shocked after the story came out and I was deluged with people telling me, uh, we didn't know either. 
Wow. And even the brother didn't know. Well, that's something that that's something that I found out long after the fact. That basically he reached out to me after the story came out and said that yes, he'd read it and it was it was fine. He yeah. he thought it was thoughtful and sensitive, right, and well done, and it was enormous relief. Yeah. And then he said that he himself had not heard until ten years ago, mm-hmm. which is probably the saddest thing that right. I can possibly think of associated with the story. But the but the other part of the reaction that you said you got were by people who thought that you pried into something that you didn't need to. Oh, absolutely. You re- there you were didn't comments. Someone's there were comments on the story um, from people saying that I had no business going here. That the story, uh, the family wanted to keep this quiet for a reason, and it was not my business to either speculate about what he was, why he died, or talk about it in any way. And but in, but in no way do you sort of reveal things that compromises privacy so I didn't think that was a, a fair criticism in journalism we always have to face some phone calls and, and interviews that we'd never want to have to do but we yeah. have to sort of do it and you sort of have to muster the courage and sure. explain it and be sensitive and then let the person you know you have to sort of create a relationship and let the person trust you with this information but right. um, in this case I think you handled it great and then especially with the conclusion in that whatever happened it was. It's imperative now that I change my sort of attitude on how to look at people. Don't assume things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stay I in can't. Contact with I people. can't go fix what happened right. three decades ago, mm-hmm. and nobody can. Right. But I can make sure that the way I'm behaving now towards people is what it should be: kindness, tolerance, mm-hmm. being, being actively telling, asking people, "Hey, how you doing?" Right. And not just, not just in the conversational way, but making sure that they're right. okay. Yeah, and this isn't the first time you've been touched by this. You had a friend. Uh, no, it's yeah, not. Yeah. I had a friend four years ago who killed himself six months after he was discharged from the army. Right. Exactly. And so that was exactly what you said. I mean, on that one, I did more of a deep dive journalistically, um, but I talked to his mother because he had killed himself on her birthday, and he loved his mother. There's no question he loved his mother, mm-hmm. but he killed himself on her birthday, mm. and I had to ask her, "What was your why?" Yeah. And, and it was. Probably the hardest question I've ever had to ask any person in my career in journalism. Mm. And she was very nice to me. I've known her, and I still know her. I still talk with her. But that's a horrendous question to ask a, a parent. The, yeah. the pushback you get from people who say, hey, you shouldn't be talking about this. The, the irony is that's exactly what ends up yeah. killing people. Right. Is yes. that people don't talk about it. We this. talked people. about that before. You, you want to give them his space. You want to give them their time to process right. it. But you, you don't. You Assuming, I mean... <laughs> In some way, you have to sort of be more assertive in this. Why people take their own lives is so difficult because it's not a rational choice. It's not made after, you know, a checklist of stuff. You're talking about, at best, a biochemical imbalance in the brain that needs kind of medical treatment and a mix of therapy, medication, whatever you, whatever path you go down, that's what you're dealing with. Yeah. And there's no way you can treat that rationally. And and the tragedy, again, too, is... uh, when it's a young person, you, you mentioned in your piece about Dan Savage uh, yes. uh, starting uh, It Gets Better. Yes, because and in the 1980s, there were horrendous numbers of, of young people uh, in the closet. And right. I and I want to specify, I have no idea whether my friend was in the closet. Mm. No clue. Yeah. I have evidence that indicate he was, and I have evidence that indicate he wasn't. Okay. And it's not something that I, I will ever be able to know. Right. Nor is it something that would explain right. why he no. died. Because yeah. there's multiple reasons for a catastrophe like suicide. There always right. will be. I talk about it and speculate about it in my story because I want to draw attention to the fact that if, in fact, that happened, yeah. he wasn't alone. Right. That well, that's this happened thing. a lot. And it still happens. When you're a kid, you, I think you're more likely to feel hopeless. About and things. alone. About silly yes. things. You no, break up with a yeah. girl or oh, whatever. Yeah. Yes. Or, I mean, they write songs about that. Right. right? Yes. It's, it's just a, 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 an emotional, and, and most cases that involve the death of a person, it's usually someone very close to them, and that's in a relationship that it's very easy to find, you know, c- connecting dots. But when you commit suicide, there's no dots to connect. There's right. No, no. There's no person to interview. It's it's all internal. Um, and hopefully, um, again, it, it, it sort of forces people in the person's circle to monitor them in a, in a polite way and even joke about it in some ways sure. to, to lighten the, the attitude and for, for them to sort of think, yeah, that's such a ridiculous thing to even process. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's a tough thing for people who aren't 
involved in mental health issues to, to figure it out. But we'll it, learn. We'll just live and learn on how to do those. And things. I think one of the tragedies can be that um, things having to do with young people tend to be minimized. Oh, you're young. Oh, this. But the fact is, almost everything is heightened when you're young. Funny is funnier. I never laughed as much when I was a young guy. Sure. Yeah. And sad is sadder. And it, it, in both cases, it's because everything is new to you. You're not this calloused person who's right. able to keep things away. And there's also this view, especially when you're in high school, that this is this is it. This is the top. Yeah. And right. I remember teaching, uh, teachers telling us repeatedly, hey, once you're in college, all this is going to be forgotten. Right. Every, and then once you're out of college, all of that's going to be forgotten. Right. And that this is going to be a blip in your life. And what we were taking so ridiculously seriously in high school yeah. was in the long term, not that important. Yeah. And that's one of those things that you hear a lot at uh, like commencement addresses and stuff, whether it's high school or college. Like, these are the best years of your <laughs> sure. life. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> off with that shit but right like, but i think you're it's, right it's well, so wrong to even like tell kids even that they've gone through that these are the best years of your life right. and then you're saying oh well it's going to be all downhill from here right. and that when you're you know and what happens if they weren't the best years of your life right yeah so yeah. Yeah. high school <laughs> sucks for a lot it's of people not, can I I get say, better than this no, yeah no, no. in fact I, i've known people who were the popular people and when you talk to them they were like oh it was hell because every day sure i had to measure up to being the popular kid and if I wasn't oh over God. something ridiculous and arbitrary, yeah. usually. Yeah. In fact, I wonder if, if you looked at this at all and open up to everyone. I wonder how social media plays into this. Social media could be so great as far Today, as getting information days, out yeah. about, hey, if you need help, this, that, sure. that thing. But, of course, as they always say, social media, you're also always presenting your best self. So if I'm feeling crappy about myself and I'm seeing you and you're in Hawaii mm -hmm. and doing that, mm -hmm. I feel like, well, shit, I'm not living the life I'm supposed to be living. It, it's extremely disorienting. Yeah. And especially if you're a young person, it can be a hellscape. It should be terrible. I've been touched by uh, this, too. I had a friend who, who committed suicide. And, and Tom was saying, when it happens, it's natural that you say, what could I have done? What could I have sure. done? I'm sure that in the past month you've gone over this. Do you think there's anything you could have done for your friend? I don't. See, this is this is the thing. Because yeah. it's, it's like, what if it wasn't something that I could have done? What if it was something that I did do? Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. There's, yes. You can look yeah. at this any number of ways. Right. As to, was there something I could have done? Well, maybe there was something I shouldn't have done mm. that I don't even know about because it made no, it it didn't even register to me that it was something I said or something somebody else said mm -hmm. that didn't even register as important. When he asked time. you to be a roommate. Who knows what right. that was about? Yeah. Right. Who knows? I don't even know what that was in regarding. Yeah. Which is contradictory on its face because it means that he was making future plans and, and right. in theory people yeah. who are going to take their own life aren't making future plans. So right. I don't I don't know. All I know is that that's that stuck with me. I think you're not for three supposed decades. to know, but you, but the fact that you're thinking through it and then concluding that I'm going to be more open to people and right that's that's a great result from all this yeah. process. Yeah, yeah, and, and and I guess it it points out even more just the ability to communicate, the ability to always be talking about it and things like that and not to have it be this kind of black mark or something like that we talked about in the previous episode that you would never be ashamed to say you had cancer right so why are sure. you ashamed to say that and then how sports you know sort of makes you feel like you have to toughen up and right. suck it up and don't oh, have well excuses that, yeah and, that that culture is yeah, yeah. antithetical to but of course that's good. so much part of youth culture to it's almost everything in youth culture yeah yeah, yeah. Almost anything. I mean, I talked briefly in the in the story about how we, 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 he and I didn't really play sports. I mean, he was a cross country guy, and we did a little intramural baseball and stuff like yeah. that. But it was minimal. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't what we were, and that was always a mark against us. Yeah, always. Yeah. Uh, thank you for talking about this. We yeah, really no appreciate worries. it. And this was great. We really had fun. We'll we put a link up to this on our website, thedrilla.com. Yeah. Thank um, you. We'll have uh, excerpts of it. This will be connected with our. Uh, the video when we put it up right um anything else you want to kind no of... i just want to thank anthony again yeah. this was terrific thank and you. even before that it was just like he was really worried that he <laughs> said look man I've, I've been in hawaii i don't know what the hell's going on here but yeah most of us don't thing. either yeah. true yeah. yeah we talk a good game that's why we're all freelance writers <laughs> right, yes right. uh check us out on twitter check us out on instagram facebook uh and all we're on instagram things. Yeah. We're on Instagram. Really? Yeah, yes. Aren't like, we? What yeah. you, like, what do you post on Instagram? We've, uh, we've posted, like, what, like three pictures randomly? <laughs> <so far>? Four, <laughs> Four now? <laughs> All right. Did you post Four. one during the show? No. Oh, we will. Darn. What are they pictures of? 
the show. Our <laughs> oh, okay. LeBron, of course. We we'll talk about him every single episode. Well, we have oh, to talk LeBron, about LeBron. Yeah. And we've left out a raccoon reference for the last few episodes. Oh, that's no right. raccoon updates that we need to get into. Yeah, have you seen our, uh, our raccoon as our mascot? Because I had raccoons in my house. You have raccoons. I raccoons. <laughs> well, they're gone now. But I did what is the biggest varmint? Uh, issue on Hawaii. My Mongers. mother-in-laws. Hey, <laughs> and with that note, yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Tune in the drill. Bye. Aloha. Oh, <sighs> very. Mahalo. <laughs> Mahalo. Oh. Excellent. <laughs>